morning. morning. It's good to see you on such a beautiful fall day. Uh, Natalie and I had the privilege of picking some apples yesterday, and I'm hoping some of you who like to do that might uh, might see this or the coming days as an opportunity to enjoy the outdoors in one way or another. Uh, We'd also like to welcome those who are tuned in electronically live or, or later in the week. We're trying to do some new things. We'll soon have a link for you in YouTube to get the other worship resources so that instead of just watching the service, you'll be able to have access to the printed liturgy and to the bulletin for each week. So so, uh, look for that soon on YouTube. Also, if uh, you would find it helpful to actually have the words of the liturgy on the screen, during these broadcasts, uh, let us know. And if, uh, if you want to email the church or if you want to use the YouTube chat feature, uh, Brandon at the desk today will get those messages from you. And uh, we could probably begin learning to put the liturgy up on the screen for you at home to follow along uh, that way. Otherwise, we're using setting two of the liturgy this morning as we uh, celebrate uh, God's goodness and as we eventually make our way to the Lord's table. Uh, We sing hymns in the back part of that red book. And uh, unless there's something I'm forgetting at the start, let's sing our opening hymn. It's hymn number 531. I get it. I've missed something else today, too. Just a moment. Yes, we do have names in our prayer book, but maybe we've missed a few. Margaret. It's like an auction. If somebody moves, I might, uh, I might catch you. Hymn 531.
beginning on page 120 in the front of your books. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God. We pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Exodus, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Bethedim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, 
Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Here ends the first reading. Bruce will be leading us as we sing a portion of Psalm 78. We'll sing in reply the words in the bold type. The text is on the back of your bulletin. Hear my teachings, O oh my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known, and what our forebears have told, will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praise for the deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works God has done. God worked marvels in the sight of The second reading is from Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, <clears throat> who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, 
even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? And Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. Oh, excuse me, I missed a line. And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. And Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not receive it, believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For those of you who might still be following those three streams of readings, note that in the passage from Exodus, the Israelites are still in the early stages of their journey from Egypt to the Promised Land, and this time they're complaining that the wilderness offers little in the way of water. They are literally thirsting to death, and they cry out for relief. And here we read that God answers them. God meets their need. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, as it continues, we, we hear a hymn honoring the humility of Christ Jesus, which may be one of the oldest statements of Christian faith in the Bible. It may also be inspired by the writings of Isaiah, who in several chapters describes quite eloquently someone we identify as the suffering servant. We read those passages often in Lent. Someone coming humbly 
to serve God and to make God evident, not in a spectacular way, but by way of serving. So follow those passages and reflect on them this morning if you prefer. Matthew reports two teachings from Jesus. The first is an exchange between Jesus and the chief priests and elders. They question Jesus' authority, and he questions their sincerity and their integrity. The second is the story we're going to look at more closely this morning. Jesus tells a parable in which a father asks two sons to help him with work in the vineyard. The first son says no, but later goes to do the work. The second says yes, but fails to do so. With Jesus finally asking, which of these sons did the will of the father? It's a pretty easy answer. The one who worked the one who, uh, who went to the vineyard. What you should keep in mind as you hear this simple story is what's happening at this stage in Jesus' ministry. He's made his way from Galilee through Samaria to Jerusalem, and conflict between Jesus and the religious authorities in the holy city is becoming more and more evident. Most notably, there are arguments about the belief of the Jewish leaders that God loves only the ancestral Jews and does not care for anyone else in the world. Remember, too, that Matthew was probably written by a Greek or Hellenized Jew for the people of his community living outside of Jerusalem, hoping to convince them that Jesus is the Messiah of all. Jews and Gentiles alike. And thanks to Paul's efforts in the previous generation, much of the growth of the Christian movement was occurring in those Gentile communities. With those things in mind, last week there was that strange story about laborers working varying hours and all being paid the same wage at the end of the day. My mother-in-law took me aside last Sunday afternoon. We always take the bulletin to her. And uh, she was waiting for me when I got there. And she was angry. She said, I don't like what Jesus had to say here. I don't think it's right. She was quite angry with him. And despite the hardness of hearing she experienced, I think, I helped her understand the story much as I'll explain it to you. If the story was about labor laws, the way that managers ought to hire workers in their fields, it would indeed be terrible advice, right? What would the laborers all learn to do? They'd all hide, they'd all sleep in, and they'd wait till 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and then they'd go down to the marketplace hoping they'd be hired to work one hour and get a whole day's pay, right? And when the workers started doing that, what would the employers start doing? <laughs> they'd go somewhere else to look for other workers who would work a full day for a full day's wage. The whole thing would break down. It would be nonsense if we took it literally as advice about the way we ought to run a, a farm or a business. But Jesus isn't talking about that. He's talking about God's gifts and blessings and how it is God pours those out to us in the world. And Jesus seems to be saying like something like, if you've been with God your whole life, if you've sought to follow Christ Jesus for, for, for 60 or 70 or 80 years or more, God loves you the same as an infant or a child or an adult still wet from baptism. God loves us as children, we keep reading in scripture, and parents seek to love their children equally. The children may be different. They may have different needs. We may have a different kind of relationship with each one of them, but we seek as parents to love them equally. 
And while we strive for that, God is able to offer that love perfectly. So God loves those who have been long connected and those just newly connected. First sons and second sons, uh, all the same. The problem, Jesus says, is that those who see themselves as the, as the obedient ones all along, the ones who have been faithful for generations and generations, they've come to believe God loves them more, that they deserve more blessing from God. And let those other newer folks work their way up through the company ladder, if you will. And maybe one day they'll receive blessings like ours. And it's that very sense of church and hierarchy that Jesus is questioning that day. He's asking those religious leaders in Jerusalem to begin to imagine the possibility that God loves all people and that God loves us all enough not only to enjoy blessings in this life, but to receive the promise of, of eternal life in the next. The challenge for us is to, to celebrate the fact that God loves so generously, that God makes sure we're all included in the family, uh, rather than thinking that some deserve blessing more than others. The challenge for us is to celebrate that that characteristic of God and then to begin trying to relate to other people in the same way God does. Just imagine that. Just imagine if everybody you met, whether they, they came here to church with you every Sunday for the last 40 years, or if these are folks who just showed up in the last couple of weeks, imagine relating to all those people as if they are full and complete sisters and brothers in Christ. People who have gifts to share, stories to tell, a service to offer. Just imagine if, if we imagine the church that way, the way that God sees it, rather than the way the world would tell us to rank folks and to see some above others. Imagine the upset that that might stir in you, <laughs> much less in those uh, chief priests and elders of old. And let that stirring be a movement of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. And so now by a peace which passes all understanding, let us keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. in 806 near the back of those red books.
Let's recite together the Apostles' Creed as affirmation of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. Lead us in your truth as we pray for creation. Empower us to look to the interests of others as we make choices that impact the environment. Summon us to be advocates on healthy waterways, habitats, and air. Merciful God, receive our prayers. We put our trust in you as we pray for the church. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and teachers the gifts of wisdom and discernment. Be with St. Argus and with all as we heard witness to God's grace. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Let us, in justice, as we pray for those in government, the military, and other positions of authority, uphold those to seek to establish peace and human rights, especially in places like Israel and Saudi Arabia Myanmar and Ukraine, give them humble and willing hearts. Look to the needs of others. We pray also for our enemies. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Turn your goodness, we pray, for all caregivers and people who are sick or suffering in any way. Especially, today we pray for Joy and Tim, Margaret, Phil, Dan, Andrew and family, Carol and Marilyn, Bob and Helen, Martha and Jane, Eric and Julie, Tyler and Ashley, Alex, Brianna and Brittany, Bradley and Alana, Jordan, David and Janet, Raymond, Helen Weaver, Carlin and Emerick, Annie, Sophie, Lena, Kathy and Bill, Nancy, Emford, and Ingrid. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Teach us your part as we pray for this congregation. Be at work in us and unite us in your love as we labor together for the sake of the gospel. Merciful God, receive our prayers. We give thanks for all the saints who died, secure in the knowledge of salvation. Keep us fearless in our faith and certain of res your resurrection. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and prayers of our heart. Trusting in your compassion, make known through Jesus Christ. Amen.
peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. I invite you to share some expression of that hope for one another. this inter interlude to give you time to reflect on God's blessings. Let's stand to sing hymn 466 is our offertory. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, be the wine of rain. Jesus Christ. 
God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. Bring your gifts to the table for an almighty fest. For this is the body of your disciples, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, Open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending prayer number 10 in the front of your books if you'd like the words, but I know that you know them. O oh God most mighty, O oh God most merciful, O oh God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise. Call us to your table. Grant us your life. When the world was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation. David fought Goliath. And the psalmists cried out for healing. And full of compassion, you granted your people life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother, 
He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O oh God, you are bread. Send your spirit on this meal. O oh God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself. O oh God, you are wine. Warm our hearts and make us one. O oh God, you are fire. Transform us with hope. O God most majestic, O God most motherly, O God our strength and our song, you show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you now and forever. comes most naturally. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, invites you to this table. So come, eat and drink what is given.
have feasted on your word. Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts, strengthen us by this food. Send us to gather the world to your banquet where none are left out and all are sanctified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The God of glory, Jesus Christ's name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Good morning. Glad to see you all here, nice faces, smiling. Here are a few announcements for the coming week. Adult confirmation class are being held here on Thursday evening at 7.30 p.m. It's not too late to become a member of the class. Sunday school will begin next week. Grade age 3 to 12 are invited to take part. As we celebrate Thanksgiving next week, please bring fresh fruits or vegetables, canned goods, or other non-perishable items to share with the clients on the Rock Food Bank, if you are able. You may also bring other items which express your thanks to God. On October Feast Meal will be served Saturday, October the 28th, at 5.30 p.m. Look for the sign-up sheet next week. Invite your friends and neighbors to join us. And you invited to learn to play handbells and perhaps join the choir at St. Barnabas. See details in the bulletin. Any other announcement? <coughs> I have one myself. I want to thank you all very much for when a new member comes in this, serve, in this church, you all greet them. And that's what I see last week, everybody. We have one new member, one brother in the back there, and we make them feel at home. All of us, sometime or the other, was a new member. I myself was one, and I was welcome in this church with open arms, and we share that, our love to each other. And that's what I got to say. Thank you. Our closing hymn, 543.
in peace, for God is at work in you. Thanks be to God.